All right, this is about to be my most boomer take ever, but alas, here we are. So, if you're an older gamer like myself, you know, I'm in my mid-twenties, and you remember the good old Halo 3 days, World of Warcraft, before it went to shit, you remember gaming being a little different. Now, I understand that the perspective might be a little different, and I'm, you know, I thought about it, and I thought about how a lot of newer gamers, uh, people like myself, are kind of, like, kind of dwindling out. We're, like, this generation of gaming that's, like, fucking retired, and we're, you know, we're adults. Back in my day, when you got a cool skin, in game and you saw someone with a cool skin it actually meant that they did something the cool skins came from you achieving something great in game it was a badge of honor and people flaunted it proudly like if you remember halo 3 specifically not from master chief collection if you play master chief collection i'm not talking about halo 3 master chief collection i'm talking about halo 3 the original if you go back and let's take a look here at the armor tier sets i want to show you something these are all the armor sets from the game, right? But if you look at all the armor sets in the game, you would have to unlock the head, the shoulders, the legs, the body. Of course, you have the Mark VI by default. Everyone had that. You also had the CQB by default. Those were what you consider the noobs. So for like this EVA skin, you would actually have to go into the game and achieve something. And in this case, you just had to beat the campaign on normal to get the entire set. EOD, you would have to complete the game on Legendary. The Hayabusa set, you would have to collect all 13 skulls hidden in the map. It was like a scavenger hunt. If you wanted to get the full scout outfit, you'd have to get hard achievements like Mongoose Mowdown, running someone over in a multiplayer match with a mongoose, which was so fun. Recon, the coveted recon armor was so hard to get before, so you would have to be granted this armor by Bungie themselves. So the cool thing about Halo was that they had this community page and you could upload your own custom maps, you could upload game types, screenshots, people would make like crazy cool screenshots, and if they became a top poster on those forums, uh, they would get rewarded with recon. So you'd have to achieve something really great to get recon and if you had uh halo 3 halo odsc there was a series of achievements you could unlock you could also unlock it that way but it was not like a walk in the park and of course the flaming head which was reserved only for bungie employees so looking at just halo 3 and I'm, we're not going to stop there i'm going to show a few other examples but halo 3 has all these cosmetics and they look cool and they're free you unlock them by achieving something and for a lot of people that meant a lot Let's take a look at World of Warcraft, another game I spent a lot of my life on before, you know, finally deciding to quit because of all the recent scandals with that. But we're not going to delve super hard into all of Activision Blizzard's scumbagginess. But take a look at this. These are all the raid transmog sets. Now, albeit some of the older ones you can just run through solo pretty much and just unlock them that way. But people would have to go and grind out these sets if they wanted them. They'd have to go and beat the raid on Mythic difficulty which is an increased difficulty you know increased boss mechanics etc it's just like a lot harder if you're not familiar with world of warcraft but you'd actually you'd have to actually go and do it you'd have to go do the thing and then you'd be rewarded with cool armor and if you saw someone in the world with the cool armor you'd know that they achieved something great or even like titles like people love to flaunt their titles if you have gladiator in your name people know that you meant people know that you were cracked at pvp like people knew that you were dumpstering people in PvP. Like, sure, you could say, well, oh, my elo's this, but, you know, you don't even have to say that. It doesn't even have to be a conversation. They see you, they see your name, they see your title, they see any armor sets you have, and they can tell exactly what achievements you have accomplished in the game, and that is pretty cool to me. Hell, Call of Duty. Call of Duty is, like, notorious for this. Now, you can kind of do this in Warzone, it's a little more difficult, but in Call of Duty multiplayer, half of the fun is getting the gun skins. And then, of course, there's the very sought after Dark Matter skin. Now, if you see someone who has the Dark Matter skin, you know that they accomplished every single gun's full camo challenge sheets, and then they got this as a reward, and that was cool. Or I guess in Modern Warfare, it was Damascus, right? You would get Damascus if you had every single weapon unlocked, and that was hard. Like, you'd have to kill people with riot shields. You'd have to do some crazy stuff with a riot shield, which is not the easiest thing to do. You'd have to do combat knives. You'd have to go through all the pistols, the launcher. These are pretty big feats. Now, let's go talk about what changed. Uh, a lot of people, if you're not in the WoW community or MMO community, you might not be aware of this, but, you know, if someone buys, like, a store mount, like, some of the mounts in World of Warcraft specifically, if we go back to that, you had to do some crazy stuff. You would have to get a drop. You'd have to do, like, maybe a mythic raid specifically to even have a chance of the drop. And then you have to beat the boss. And then you also have to be lucky enough to get the drop. And this isn't a loot box or anything. It's a similar system. It is kind of gambly. It's random RNG. But the point being is you don't pay for it. You're not paying for the loot box experience. You're not paying for the RNG part of it. You actually just went and did something and you just achieved it. 
and you get to flaunt it you get to tell people that you did this thing and it is you know it's fun now i'm gonna look at some uh more modern games so you know fortnite they have a lot of partnered skins now let's talk about you know modern gaming customization especially multiplayer games a lot of multiplayer has gone free to play and you know i think that's good games like fortnite have actually done wonders for gaming as a whole and like objectively if you look at it it brought in a ton of new people who might not have previously been gamers it brought a lot of excitement to esports one of these things that i actually do agree with for monetization in a free-to-play sense is uh the battle pass now the battle pass is a nice middle ground for both the player and the developer to you know support the developer and the player still gets rewarded now it's kind of similar to like a paid game or one of the older games where you're rewarded for playing the game and at the end of the battle pass there's this, like the secret section where if you go past 100 and you get all these other tiers you'll unlock these like fancy skins or whatever granted i guess you could argue it's a participation trophy whatever that's besides the point they did something they achieved something they get to flaunt it and uh it's rare it has rarity to it it's scarce it, it holds some weight now the cool thing about the battle pass is like you can buy it once and then you get enough v bucks or i guess if it's cod you get enough cod points and uh, plus a little extra after you complete it and then you can use that extra bit that you save up or whatever and you use it in the premium store where the licensed stuff goes and actually if you score high enough in arena and you gather enough points the hype or whatever uh, you do get some exclusive skins so they do have a nice system for like achieving something in that sense now let's look at something like league of legends so i know they've kind of gotten a little better they implemented a sort of free loot box system where you get the keys and you open it, you can get shards and you can sort of unlock characters and skins that way and i think that's actually a good thing like it's a pretty mild loot box system it's not really intrusive or anything but man i played from what beta league of legends to about season six or something and it was straight riot points dude <laughs> it was straight riot points and there's like not much to sh there's like not much to show if you were like cracked like every season your rank resets you get the cool like border in the beginning you can like show that off i guess temporarily but if you're a high rank in that game you don't really get anything to show for it i mean you can keep climbing the ranks over and over again to keep proving that you're good at the game but in the end like if you do want to make your character look cool or whatever i mean you just gotta dish the money out and that kind of sucks let's talk about a big one apex legends lots of people love apex legends you know i was under the impression and correct me if i'm wrong because i don't really play that much apex legends anymore but when heirlooms came out i was under the impression that you like had to get mastery or something of a character and you would unlock this heirloom which would be like a special item for the character for their melee uh, their knife or whatever now at face value when i heard about that and they added it, i was like that is so cool i want caustics because i was a gas daddy but then i see tim the tatman playing recently and he's opening 250 loot boxes and he gets he's just pulling heirlooms that's scummy dude <laughs> that is scummy like you would think that this special item for your character you main would be earned by doing some sort of achievement on your main like you would have to do some crazy thing to unlock it but instead, it's like, what is it? It is a 1 in 500 chance of getting heirloom shards. And then, like, <laughs> with that, you can try to get the heirloom that way. Good news. If you open 499 Apex crates without getting a single heirloom, the next crate, the 500th one, will give you an heirloom. Wow, that is just so scummy, dude. <laughs> So there's also specific collection events. These are when a new heirloom set is added to the game. If you collect all 24 items during the event, you'll unlock that specific heirloom set. If you miss an event, well, you've got to cross your fingers for some heirloom shards. Oh, so there's there's not just the melee weapon. It could be a pose and it could be a quip. And don't even get me started on how long it takes to unlock a character by playing the game. Jesus Christ. And it sucks. Like, I, th I feel like the heirloom should be something you unlock with an achievement. Because I think something that significant, showing that you have a mastery of your character, showing that you have done some like crazy work would reward you with something cool like that you know i needed to rant about the cosmetics and games and people like dismissing cosmetics and thinking that it should just be like something you buy uh i just don't think it's the case and i think games need to you know balance out stuff that's achievable stuff that actually holds its own against stuff in the cash shop it has to be hard to get that's the whole point anyway that's my rant on cosmetics uh thank you so much for watching if you made it this far be sure to drop a like down below if you dislike to dislike again thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video with whatever the hell it is i'm doing Mad love. Peace out.